the Jewish Halloween, in that there's costumes and parties and in absolutely no other respect. Purim commemorates the victory of the Jews in Persia over their archenemy Haman, or in English, Haman, as told in the book of Esther. For synagogue-going Jews, celebrating Purim starts on the evening of the 14th of Adal with reading the Megillah, the scroll that tells the story of Esther. The reading is lively. In costumes, people boo and spin groggers every time the villain Haman's name is said. It's taught he was descended from Amalek, a people the Torah commanded Jews to remember to forget. So yelling over his name is a way to continue blotting Amalek out. Less traditionally, some communities will cheer for Vashti, Winnie for horses, etc. Hearing the entire Megillah, every word, is the biggest commandment of Purim. There are shorter Purim spiels, comedic sketches, with actors, puppets, and of course, YouTube videos. In communities around the world, there are other traditions too. Visiting the tombs of Esther and Mordechai in Iran, dragging Haman effigies around in Yemen, and striking stones with Haman's name on them together in France. The ten chapters of the Megillah go as follows. King Achashverosh tells his wife Vashti, You won't show yourself off for my friends? New wife, please. So all of the women are like, Me? And King Achashverosh says to one named Esther, Yes, you. Now, Esther was Jewish, but her uncle Mordechai tells her, Mum's the word. Meanwhile, in the palace, the king's advisor Haman says, I'm great, you should all bow to me. But Mordechai says, nah, a public act of bravery. So Haman says, I'm mad now, so I'm going to kill all the Jews. In protest, Mordechai wears a sack and stops eating, and other Jews follow. More public bravery. Perhaps you're noticing a theme? And Esther does something that could get her killed. She goes to King Achashverosh and says, Hey, men wants to kill me. So, King Achashverosh says, Let's kill him instead. My new advisor is Mordechai. Let's have a parade. And they do. The end. God isn't mentioned once in the story. Instead, it's a tale of political maneuvering, personal activism, and communal bravery against an anti-Semitic plot. The sages teach God's presence hides beneath the surface in all of the acts of bravery. These acts are centered around standing up for what's right, and what better way to commemorate that than by getting drunk, dressing up, and partying? It's an Ashkenazi tradition to dress up for Puri. Maybe in homage to the hidden miracles, maybe because Estelle pretended to not be Jewish, or maybe thanks to 15th century Roman carnival customs. While the holiday of Purim goes back over 2,000 years, dressing up for Purim started right around then. In Israel, this has been adopted by the Sephardi community and is all around a big deal. There are family-friendly parades, huge street parties, and tons of carnival-themed club events. This holiday gets even the most secular folks out to celebrate. If you go to a synagogue for Purim, you have a good chance of running into goofy melodies used for the usual prayers, a costume contest, a preschool carnival, and piles of hamantashen. In Israel, they're called Oznamun. They're three-cornered cookies. The best ones are stuffed with chocolate. This is a fact. Non-opinion. Poppy seed ones can be pretty good, and if you're unlucky, you might get stuck with one of the fruit-filled ones. The three sides represent Haman's hat, or his ears, or our forefathers, or dice from the royal game of Ur. Who knows? There's all sorts of reasons given. Around the world, there are other special Purim foods, like Iraqi chickpea turnovers, and Moroccan sweet Purim bread with a hard-boiled egg inside it. Enough about food. There's also an obligation to drink. Until you can't tell the difference between the phrases cursed is Haman and blessed is Mordechai. This is a holiday requirement that rabbis have debated for centuries, asking really, are we really required to drink this much? With a short answer of, well, yeah, if you can, this is a good holiday. Like most Jewish holidays, there's also a big meal, a Purim Seuda, and some extra prayers. Outside of eating, listening to the Megillah, and drinking, there's a few other mitzvot for Purim. On Purim Day, like all Jewish holidays, it starts at night and continues into the next day, you're supposed to give gifts to friends called Mishloach Manot, or Shalach Manis in Yiddish. This joy-spreading commandment requires you to give at least two portions of food to a friend, but more is always more fun. People deliver Mishloach Manot to their friends by hand and at parties, sometimes through synagogue fundraisers. Also, it's a mitzvah to make gifts of money to at least two needy people. This Purim Tzedakah is called Matanot Laevionim. Purim literally translates to lots, as Haman casts lots to decide what day to destroy the Jewish people. Pur, notably, is also in the name Yom Kippur, and there are some neat connections between the two holidays. Purim can inspire. The Jewish people can unite across geography and time to see the hidden, to overcome adversity, and to celebrate. Chag Purim Sameach. Happy Purim.